Welcome to Daily News Weekly, we we highlight the stories from the past week that you might have missed. I'm your host, Michael Sheridan, and I'm back solo again, but I'll tell you, I like it better when I have my daughter here. This woman is awesome. Danielle Reno was picking up her daughter in Missouri when a thief swiped her SUV. She filed a report with police, but then decided on her own to figure out what happened to her car and get it back. So she used a little detective work. She tracked the, the charges that were being made to her card, as well as her phone, which was still in the car, and actually managed to find the locations that the uh, thief had apparently been going to. And through all that, she managed to track the woman to an Applebee's, and then did something even more ballsy. She actually just got in the car and took it back. And of course, in what probably should be seen as a sign of the times, Reno streamed live on Facebook when she took the car back. And it's very entertaining to watch. You should check it out. The link is down below. She also went back and captured video of the arrest of uh, three women, one who's uh, believed to be the alleged thief and two other women who were in the car with her. Now, as cool as all that sounds, unfortunately, Reno didn't seem to be very happy with the car when she did get it back. There was a mess in the back seat. It was beer. There was apparently some kind of odor she didn't particularly care for. Uh, there may have been some drug paraphernalia, according to Reno. But either way, I gotta say, Danielle, you are awesome. One tough cookie. Bravo. The absolutely ridiculous event on Facebook to raid Area 51 is no laughing matter, at least not to the Air Force. The military has actually responded to the event that went viral and apparently attracted as many as a million people who are saying that they're going to run into Area 51 in Nevada to, quote, see them aliens. An Air Force spokesperson told the Washington Post, Area 51 is an open training range for the U.S. Air Force, and we would discourage anyone from trying to come into the area where we train American armed forces. The U.S. Air Force always stands ready to protect America and its assets. Now, apparently the person who created this Facebook page claims that it was all supposed to be just a joke. It was just funny. And he wanted to try to get thumbsy upsies on the internet. Despite whatever the original idea for this event was, all the media attention has attracted so many people that it's, it's, it's very likely someone or a group of people are going to show up on September 20th to try to run into Area 51. One key thing to kind of keep in mind here is everybody, people are acting as if somehow you can pass the barrier of Air, Area 51 and suddenly you're there. It's like there's miles of desert, open desert, that you have to cross before you even get to the base. So it's not quite that simple. And besides, there are no aliens at Area 51. They got moved to that secret base in Ohio. So last week's episode, wow. Hundreds of comments, tens of thousands of views, all off the Area 51 story, which was really viral the day we happened to post the episode. And we got a lot of comments about that. Some people were not very nice. Most people are people who had never seen the show before, didn't know this was a show. But uh, it was very interesting to see some of the remarks. Now, a lot of those comments about Area 51 really varied. And most of them were ones using words I can't really repeat here. But what I would say to a lot of the comments, which there was a consistency to it, and most of them argued that you'd get shot if you actually charged into Area 51. Of course you're going to get shot. They all kind of criticized me for indicating that you wouldn't get shot. And in fact, all you'd really do is get arrested. No. They're not going to just shoot you. They can. They actually have the ability or the right to do that because you are, in fact, trespassing on a military installation. However, the likelihood is they're not going to do that. They are simply going to detain you and fine you. Another story that got a lot of feedback through comments was our bit about the Spider-Man etching on the gravestone. Father in uh, England's trying to get one put on the tombstone for his young son who passed away, but apparently Disney refused to grant them permission in order to do it. Kitsa Official on YouTube wrote, we put a cat in the hat on a gravestone alongside, alongside a Dr. Zeus quote. F Disney, honor your family however you want. Spill it on YouTube wrote, has Tom Holland reacted to the Disney thing? If not, I'm waiting. I don't know. I mean, I guess people could bring it to his attention, but I'm willing to bet he's going to stay away from it and not get involved. Dante Cote on YouTube wrote, Disney does not own Spider-Man. Sony does. 
Now, strangely enough, this was actually a comment written a couple of times. But just to be clear, no. Disney owns Marvel. Marvel owns Spider-Man. Sony just owns the movie rights to Spider-Man. They don't own the character. There's a difference. Another thing we talked about last week was a Pennsylvania school district's effort to arm teachers, with they, which they have now abandoned because of a new state law. Now, excuse me if I butchered this name. A do Paul Michael on Facebook wrote, teachers with guns, they are not trained to become police officers. I think that's really the fair point there. America Corson on YouTube wrote, she's right. She said, referring to my daughter's comments, they should not give teachers guns. They should just have good security. Now, not everybody was against the idea of arming teachers. Brandon's Outdoor Channel wrote on YouTube, teachers should have the option to conceal carry weapons if they wish and have a permit. Protect the kids like a bank. I hate ticks. I hate them with a passion. When I was a little kid, I, was going, I went camping with my parents and one time I got covered in ticks. I hate them. So this news is just terrifying. The Asian longhorn tick is posing a rather disturbing threat to animals, according to experts. This insect, which apparently started showing up in the United States just two years ago, has been known to suck so much blood from animals that they're killing them. Seriously, these ticks have reportedly actually killed animals by draining almost all their blood. Now, there are a couple of reasons why these ticks apparently can suck so much blood from a single animal. One of those things is because females that are well-fed can lay as many as 2,000 eggs, and they can do this without mating. They just do it on their own. The other part of it is because unlike normal ticks, which will only suck your blood for a couple of days, these ticks can do it for as long as two weeks. Now, these parasites have already been found in 10 states, including New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania. And one of the big concerns is that these guys can also transmit diseases like any other tick, which makes them even more dangerous, especially to humans. Experts note that when you go into wooded areas, you should be careful. Make sure you're treating yourself with bug repellent and, and all that kind of stuff. And also make sure that you're treating your dogs and your cats so that way they're safe from these disgusting blood suckers. So when is a manhole not a manhole? When you're in Berkeley, California, apparently. The city council there has apparently passed a measure to update the city's entire municipal code to remove and replace gender-specific words with gender-neutral ones. For example, a manhole in Berkeley is now officially designated a maintenance hole. This apparently applies to a lot of different words in the municipal code. One of them is manpower, which would be replaced with workforce or human effort. The word man-made will have a lot of different words, including human-made or machine-made. I'm actually kind of surprised that they went with the word human. I would have thought maybe they'd go with you people. There's actually a list of all the terms they're changing online. You can check it out through the link below. Now this change does not just specifically target masculine words. It goes across the board going after anything that suggests gender of any sort. For example, the words sorority and fraternity won't appear in the municipal code anymore. Instead, they're being replaced by the mouthful collegiate Greek system residence. Now I kind of get some of these changes. I, I, I remember back in the day when you know, people were debating whether you should call them policemen anymore or fire, firemen anymore when it was firefighter or police officer. You know, I, I get it and I think that's legitimate, but like manhole covers? Isn't that a little ridiculous? And seriously, doesn't the city council have better things to be doing? More important, pressing matters to deal with? All right, that's it. Thank you for watching, everybody. And if you enjoyed the episode, please hit that like button down below. Please share the episode with your friends and family, whether it's on Facebook or Twitter or YouTube or whatever. And let me just stress that I really, really was excited to see how many people commented on the last episode and how people are just commenting more and more on all the episodes on Facebook and on YouTube. It's been really exciting to see. The comments are all, always nice, but I like seeing people comment. I like people engaging and especially when they're discussing the stories that we're trying to highlight every week, whether they're silly stories or serious issues. You know, we, we love seeing the comments and, and want people to be able to say whatever it is they want to say. So thanks for watching, thanks for commenting, and I'll see you next week.